Hi everybody, Coach Will here from Lake Forest Sailing. Like all of you, I'm stuck inside, hopefully for not much longer. In the meantime, I'm going to teach you guys an activity about how to build your own boat, preferably a boat that floats. So buoyancy is basically whether or not something floats. Think about it. You throw a rock into a pond, it's going to sink. A duck, it's going to float. Hopefully you're not throwing the duck into the pond, but you see what I'm saying. So, pop quiz time. This orange, do you think it's going to float or sink? All right, let's see who is correct. So, we're trying to figure out if this orange is buoyant, if it's going to float. Those of you that said the orange will float, you're right. Now, what if I peel this orange? Is it still going to float? So the orange with the peel on it, it floated. Now, a peeled orange, the exact same one, let's see if it floats or if it sinks. So the peeled orange, as you can tell, it sinks. It's lighter because we took the peel off. But the peel has little pockets of air in it that help it float. And it also, by closing up the whole orange, it keeps all the water out and displaces all the water to help it float. So that's what makes it buoyant. It's displacing more water than when you take the peel off. So think about the peel. It's just like wearing a life jacket. If you hop in a pool without a life jacket and you just stay there, you're going to go down in the water. If you put your life jacket on, that's like your peel. It makes you have more volume, displace more water, and float above the water. Give me a sec. So, I know what you're thinking. All right, Coach Will, you showed us how an orange with the peel on it floats, and when you peel it, it's less buoyant, and it's more dense less volume, it sinks. Cool. What about real boats? Well, there's a boat, a ship, called the Pioneering Spirit. It displaces, it moves as much water as 300,000 elephants, and it still floats. That ship in particular is used to haul huge oil rigs out of the ocean. So a boat that heavy can float because of the shape of its hull. The hull is the, the belly, the bottom of the boat, the main part of the boat. So we're going to talk about how we make the best hull that can float well and carry the most weight, and it's not going to look like an orange, I'll tell you that. So a fun competition that you can do with your siblings or your friends virtually at home is to just take a standard size of uh, Play-Doh here and challenge that person to design a boat that can hold the most amount of pennies or a like weighted object. So we're going to make two different designs to show you, to give you a little tip to beat your friend's boat and displace the most water. So displacement is the water that the hull pushes away when it's in the water. So the weight of the boat pushes water out to the side. It's called displacement. This guy a long time ago got in his bathtub. He filled it up way too much. His name was Archimedes, and he uh, came up with displacement, basically. He recognized displacement first. All right, so we're talking about hull design. Which one of these two Play-Doh boats is going to hold the most weight or float while holding the most weight? Our blue one here is smaller. All right, it's more dense. They both weigh the same. They both weigh the same amount, but they uh, are different style hulls. <clears throat> Our yellow one is definitely bigger. Okay, it's kind of flat like a pancake and has a big wide bottom. So we're gonna load these up and see which one is the better hull design. All right, first we have to see if they float with no coins in them. So our blue one doesn't even float. All right, let's see about our yellow one. So our yellow one floats. Let's see how many coins it holds. So already we can see what's happening here. 
The blue one is more dense. It has the same mass, so it's displacing less water. It has a smaller volume. We've got one quarter in yellow, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, a dollar, dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty, two bucks. Let's try a Sacagawea coin, another one. Look at this, this is pretty good. So already, oh, we're taking on water and we're down. All right, so the next lesson from this is hull design. We definitely need some, some surface area to displace more water if we want to carry any weight in our boat. Now let's see how we can take this lesson and build an even better boat. And this time, we're going to make it a sailboat. All right, so now we've learned for a boat to float, it has to be buoyant. All right, it has to be positively buoyant, which basically just means that it has to float. So we've learned from these examples that it has to have, the hull has to have a big enough surface area and volume to displace more water than the weight of the boat itself. So think about it this way, a bowling ball and a basketball, the exact same size. You drop them in your pool, the bowling ball is gonna sink, the basketball is gonna float. They're the same volume, but one weighs a lot more than the other, all right? so. This is where this week's challenge comes in. Now that you know how to make a boat float, or the basic principles of making a boat float, you're gonna design and build your own small sailboat that floats, okay? So you can build this out of anything that you have around your house, and then you can test it out in your sink, your tub, your pool, or a pond. So to make this a sailboat, it has to have a few important parts, all right? The first requirement for your at-home model boat is that it has to have a hull. Okay, so this is the main part of the boat, and the design of your hull, as we saw over here with the Play-Doh, is gonna factor in a lot to if it floats or not. All right, then it has to have a mast, all right, which is this tall pole that holds up the sail, and then it has to have a boom, which is this horizontal pole that holds the sail out. All right, so, so far we've got the hull, the mast, the boom, and the sail. Then beneath the boat, you have to have a keel, and a rudder. The keel is a counterweight that helps keep the boat upright when it's sailing, and the rudder is very important because it steers the boat. So your model doesn't have to look like this. This is professional. Um, but now let's go see what we can find around the house to build our own model. So anything that floats is going to be important. All right, so we're talking water bottles, two liter bottles, foam, styrofoam, balloons, and then remember we need stuff for the mast and boom, so pencils, dowels, anything like that, and then we need a sail, right, to catch the wind, so be creative with that. Let's see what you can come up with. All right, let's see what I found to build my first boat. I've got some wooden dowels. I've got an orange juice container. And then from a, a failed boat project, I have two little floating hull designs that we're going to try and use somehow, and an old t-shirt that we're going to use as a sail. And I think all we're gonna need are my scissors and a hot glue gun. And remember guys, safety's no accident. All right guys, so here's the first boat that I built uh, with stuff laying around my house. Like we said, I had this orange juice bottle. I've got these wooden dowels. So this is the mast, this is the boom. We have these styrofoam hulls from a different project, and we have a lot of hot glue. Hot glue is my best friend in this project. So this is a little different than your typical sailboat. So this is called a trimaran because it has three hulls, all right? We have our main hull and then our two outrigger hulls. And so this doesn't need a keel. This is a whole nother lesson, but it does need a keel because it uh, gets its writing moment from these hulls, all right? And so now uh, we're gonna build an even easier one that's more like your normal sailboat. And we're just gonna use cardboard, some aluminum foil, and a little bit of hot glue, and that's it. All right guys, so you can see that uh, to build a boat required for this challenge, it's pretty easy. This boat has no hot glue, it just has aluminum foil and then a little extra piece of dowel from the trimaran, all right? Uh, it's got a sail, it's got a mast, it's got a boom, all right, it has its keel or its dagger board, and then it's got its rudder for steering, and then obviously, to make it a boat, it's got a hull. 
So let's see if this boat will uh, will float in our tank over here uh, and see if it's buoyant. So that's a good start. Let's see if we got any change. All right. Oh yeah, I don't even know if I have enough change to, to sink this boat. It's so well built. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to Coach Will's workshop. I hope uh, that you have success building boats that float. So, to recap, buoyancy. Buoyancy is basically the force that allows something to float. If it's positively buoyant, an object, it's going to float. All right, like we saw with our different uh, boat models. So, the challenge, the challenge for you is to build a boat that floats that has a mast, a boom, a sail, a hull, a rudder, and a keel. Okay, and then to really enter the challenge, you'll want to email me at this email address a video or a picture of your boat floating with all the different parts visible. And feel free to decorate your boats a little bit more than I did. And after this, we're going to show you some examples that the kids on the Lake Forest Sailing Race teams of the boats that they built to help give you some ideas and get started. All right, well, we'll see you out on the water soon enough.